Now let us understand what happens when the demand and supply simultaneously change. Simultaneously change means they change at the same time. In all the earlier cases, we have considered change in only one of the two factors. Either only the demand was changing or only the supply was changing. Now what we'll do is we'll see cases where both are simultaneously changing and then we'll study the effect of such change on the equilibrium price. So now let's consider the first case. Let's consider the first case. Here DD is the original demand curve and D1 D1 is the new demand curve. We can see that the D1 D1 is above the original DD demand curve. This means the demand has increased. Again we have a curve SS which is the original supply curve and then we have S1 S1. Now S1 S1 is on the right hand side of the original SS supply curve. That means supply also has increased. So in this case both demand and supply are increasing at the same time. Both are simultaneously increasing. So let us first take the original case where DD curve is cutting the SS curve. The DD curve is cutting the SS curve at point E. So we see that Q is the equilibrium quantity and P is the equilibrium price. But what happens when both increase? Demand also increases, supply also increases. But let me tell you in this case, demand and supply are increasing in the same proportion. There is a proportionate change in the same, both are increasing by the same degree. So what happens since demand is increasing and supply is also increasing by the same amount by the same fraction by the same proportion what happens is the price remains constant because we've seen that when demand increases and supply remains constant prices tend to go up and when supply increases demand remains constant what happens is the prices tend to come down. So both the actions tend to negate each other. By increase in demand, the price goes up. By increase in supply, the price comes down. So both the actions average each other out. Both the actions negate or nullify each other's effect. So the effect on price is nil. The price remains constant as we see in this case you can see that the new d1 d1 curve that is the demand curve and the new supply curve ss sorry s1 s1 both are intersecting at the point e1 the point e1 forms the new equilibrium where q1 is the new equilibrium quantity and P is the new equilibrium price. But P is same in both cases. The equilibrium price in the earlier case was P. The equilibrium price now after the change is again P. This point E1 is extension of point E only along the x-axis. So the price remains the same. So we can say that when both change by same percentage that is when demand and supply increase by same percentage the price remains constant the price does not change and that is the first principle
which is price is constant when percentage change in demand equals to percentage change in supply. Now we consider the second case wherein percentage change in demand is more than the percentage change in supply. We can see that the percentage change, demand changes by a higher percent in the second case and supply changes by a lower percentage. The gap between the original supply curve and the new supply curve is less but the gap between the original demand curve and the new demand curve is more. So we can say demand is changing by a higher percentage than supply. Now let us see what happens in this case. The original demand curve meets the original supply curve at point E. So this is the point of equilibrium where Q is the equilibrium quantity and P is the equilibrium price. Now since both are increasing, let us see if the equilibrium point changes. Yes, the equilibrium point changes as the new demand curve D1 D1 and the new supply curve S1 S1 intersect each other at point E1. So point E1 is the new point of equilibrium and Q1 is the new equilibrium quantity and P1 is the new equilibrium price. Now what has happened? We see that the price has gone up. And this is what is mentioned here. Price increases when the percentage change in demand is more than the percentage change in supply. We know that an increase in demand leads to increase in price. We also know that an increase in supply leads to fall in price. And when both these things happen, their effect gets nullified. So no change on price. But that is only when both increase in the same proportion. But what if demand increase? But what if demand increases at a greater proportion? The change in demand is higher than the change in supply. So a change in demand when it is higher, it will lead to a increase in price by a higher level. But when the supply increases with a lower level, it will lead to a fall in price by a small extent. So the change in demand will have the higher effect on price. Here, since the change in demand is higher, we'll see that it will get negated to some extent by an increase in supply. And the result would be a slight increase in price because the change in supply is not good enough to offset the change in demand. Change in demand is more than the change in supply. Now let's consider the third case. This is the case where the change in demand is less than the change in supply. Let's see what would happen. Here again we have the original demand and supply curves which meet at point E. So E is the original equilibrium point where Q is the original equilibrium quantity and P is the original equilibrium price. Now what happens is supply is increasing. So is demand. Demand is also increasing. But we see that the increase is uh, but we see that the increase in supply is more than the increase in demand. The supply is increasing at a greater proportion with a greater percentage. So now in this new demand and supply curves, we see that the new intersection point is even. So the point even becomes the new equilibrium point 
where q1 is the new equilibrium quantity and p1 is the new equilibrium price the result is the price is falling the price has come down from p to p1 now why has the price come down from p to p1 because the increase in supply is more than the increase in demand so there is excess stock in the market so for the producers to sell off all the stock they'll have to sell it at a reduced price only when they reduce the price the consumers will be able to purchase more of that product and then the demand would increase and they'll be able to sell off the quantity so we see that when the supply increases in higher proportion then the increase in demand the prices tend to fall the equilibrium price comes down so this justifies our third proposition which says the price decreases when the percentage change in demand is less than the percentage change in supply